In section 9.10, we'll be focusing on right triangle trigonometry. After watching this video, you will be able to use trigonometric ratios to solve right triangles. You will also need your calculator while working through this video, so make sure that you have your calculator out that is ready to go. First thing we want to think about is the fact that we have three units used to measure an angle. In this class, we will only use degrees to measure angles. Radians and gradients will be used in your upper level math classes, but we will not use them in this class. First thing we want to do is make sure that our calculators are in degree mode. So please take out your calculator and let's make sure it's in degree mode. In order to check for this, we are going to press the mode button, which is to the right of the second button in the upper left hand corner. It says mode. Click on that. Notice my calculator is in radians because radian is highlighted. We want degree highlighted. So please make sure that you highlight degree. In order to get there, let's arrow down a few spaces. And I want to arrow to the right to highlight degree. In order to highlight it, I hit enter. And now we have degree blinking. And that's what we want. In order to exit the screen, let's hit second mode in order to quit. I'm going to really quickly just check on mode again to make sure the degree is highlighted now. If you do not have your calculator in degree mode, all of your answers will be incorrect. So let's make sure we have it in degree mode. I'm going to hit second in mode again, and now we're ready to start calculating once we get to that time. Now, to solve for a missing angle or missing side of a right triangle, we're going to set up the following equation that we're going to use throughout this video. It's going to be the function of our angle measure, and that's going to equal the ratio. Now, when we talk about function, we're talking about those trigonometric functions that we talked about yesterday. So we're either going to be using sine, cosine, or tangent. And we'll figure that out based off of what we're given in the given information. The angle is going to be the angle measure, and then the ratio, we're going to use that idea of SOHCAHTOA to figure out our ratio. This will all make much more sense once we get to the first example. Here are some rounding instructions. I'll let you read those. Please round your sides to the nearest tenth and your angles to the nearest degree, unless otherwise specified. Reminder, we will be using what we learned yesterday which is that SOHCAHTOA. For example one, we want to find CB, which is the length of the side of the triangle. I'm going to put an X there since we don't know what it is and that's what we want to find. Notice we only know one side of this right triangle, so we cannot use Pythagorean theorem to solve for this missing side. And the angle that we're given here is the 63 degree angle. That's not a 60 degree angle, it's not a 30 or a 45 degree angle, so we can't use our special right triangles from before. This is a clear indicator that we have to use SOHCAHTOA or trigonometry. Let's refer back to the example that we have up here in terms of our trig equation. We're going to be using this to set up and solve for the missing side length. So let's first determine which trig function we're going to use. Then we'll put in the measure of our angle and then we'll write our ratio. Let's always start at our angle given. Not the right angle, but the other angle. So I'm starting there and let's determine what sides we have marked up. So we want to find our adjacent side to that angle and we're given the hypotenuse. So if we Think back to SOHCAHTOA. Which one has an A and an H? The SO, the CA, or the TOA? The SO has an O and an H, and the TOA has an O and an A. But cosine helps us work with the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. And we want to find the adjacent side, and we're given the hypotenuse. So that means that we're going to use cosine. So the cosine of our angle, which is 63 degrees, is equal to, now we have to write our ratio. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is x over the hypotenuse, which is 14. 
Now, in order to solve for x, we want to reduce this fraction. So in order to reduce this fraction, we have to multiply both sides of the equation by 14. That will reduce our fraction to 1, leaving us with x here. So x is going to be 14 times the cosine of 63. So now let's go ahead and enter that into our calculators. So we're typing in 14 times, as you can see here, the sine, cosine, and tangent functions are right here. So we're doing 14 times the cosine of 63. And then we're going to hit enter. So we end up getting 6.3558. Um, well, it's technically 6.3559 if we rounded, but remember we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be 6.4. So we know that that side is approximately 6.4 units. And that's our final answer. Let's move on to example two. Example two, we want to find BC. So I'm going to put an X there. The angle that we're given is a 15 degree angle. So now let's determine which trig function we're using. Either so, ka, or toa. So sine, cosine, or tangent. So starting at our 15 degree angle, we want to find the side opposite that angle, and we're given the side adjacent to that angle. We don't have anything to do with our hypotenuse here. So which one has an O and an A? The so, the ka, or the toa? Well, the so has an O and an H. The ka has an A and an H. We don't care about our hypotenuse here, and we're not given any information about it. So that means we're going to use tangent, because we want to find our opposite side, which is the O, and we're given our adjacent side, which is the A. So... We are going to say that the tangent of our angle, which is 15 degrees, is equal to, now let's write our ratio. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the side opposite this angle is x over the adjacent, which is 29. And we want to solve for x. So in order to reduce this fraction, let's go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 29. That will reduce this fraction. So it'll leave us with x is equal to 29 times the tangent of 15. So let's go ahead and get our calculators out. So now we're typing 29 times, here's our tangent function, so the tangent of 15 degree angle. So let's go ahead and round that to the nearest tenth. That'll be about 7.8. So the length of that missing side is approximately 7.8. Moving on to example three. Example three, we want to find xz. So I'm going to go ahead and put an x there. Once again, let's determine if we're using sine, cosine, or tangent. So I'm writing Sokotoa up here. And in order to determine it, we have to start at the angle that we're given, which is our 37 degree angle. And if we look at our 37 degree angle, we're given our adjacent side, which is 50, and we want to find our hypotenuse. So A and H, A and H means that we're using cosine. So we're going to say the cosine of our 37 degree angle is equal to, so we have to do adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 50 over the hypotenuse, which is X, because that's what we want to find. Now notice this is a little different here because now x is in our denominator. So in order to reduce this fraction, we have to multiply both sides of the equation by our denominator, which is x. So that'll reduce the fraction there. We're left with x times the cosine of our 37 degree angle is equal to 50. Well, we want to solve for x. So since it's x times the cosine of 37, in order to solve for x, we have to do the opposite of multiply, which in this case here is divide. So we want to divide both sides of the equation by this entire thing, the cosine of 37. That will reduce it on the left-hand side of the equation and leave us with just x. So we have to type 50 
divided by the cosine of 37 in our calculators in order to solve for x. So let's pull up our calculators. So now we're doing 50 divided by, I'm typing in what we see here, the cosine of 37 and enter. So that gives us, let's go ahead and round to the nearest tenth, 62.6. 62.6. Let's go ahead and do, finally, example four. Example four, we're given a rectangle, and we want to find AC. So I'm going to put an X there. Since this is a rectangle, we know that this angle D must be a right angle. So I'm just now going to focus on triangle ADC. We have to determine if we're using sine, cosine, or tangent to solve for the missing side length. So let's go ahead and start at our 57 degree angle. And let's mark what we're given. We're given the side opposite that angle, which is 32, and we want to find our hypotenuse. So we're looking for O and H. O and H means we're using sine. So we are going to say that the sine of our 57 degree angle is equal to sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the side opposite the 57 degree angle is 32 over the hypotenuse, which we don't know, so I'm going to call that x. We want to solve for x, so let's go ahead and reduce our fraction. In order to do that, I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator of our fraction, which is x, which leaves us with x times the sine of 57 on the left-hand side of the equation equal to 32 on the right-hand side of the equation. In order to get x by itself and solve for x, we have to divide both sides of the equation by the sine of 57. That will reduce the sine of 57 on the right-hand side of the equation, and it'll leave us, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side of the equation, rather, and it'll leave us with just x. And now we have to type 32 divided by the sine of 57 in our calculators. So let's go ahead and do that. We're doing 32 divided by the sine of 57. Let's see what we get. If we round that to the nearest tenth, it'd be approximately 38.2. So the length of that side is 38.2 units. We'll pick back up with the second video in just a moment.